So guys, we are back with another One Piece chapter 1074. This chapter was not that crazy, but likely important like other One Piece chapter. But it was good to see Vivi after so many chapters. No, let's jump right into the chapter without wasting much time. Germa cover story is continuing. In the last cover story we saw, Judge, Queen, Caesar all of them seem getting along quite well. In this cover story we see few year has passed. In this cover story all three are quarreling with each other. Judge has perfected his spear. And Queen is seen with his mechanical arm. This may be the last time they all were together before the fall of Mads. But after fall of Mads also Caesar worked for short time with Vegapunk. Chapter starts with CP0 agents that were left below are in Fabrio phase. They are being attacked by 50 units of a new pacifistas model called Mark III pacifistas. And this chapter also being titled as Mark III based on new pacifistas model. CP0 agent came on Egghead Island for the assassination of Dr. Vegapunk. But they ran out of luck. At first they fell into the hands of the Straw Hats who thrashed them. And now Mark III are kicking their ass. These new pacifists' ability are amazing they not only shield themselves from any attacks using a technique called Bubble Shield, but also deflect their opponent's attack. One of the random CP0 stated that, this pacifists are stronger than those that we saw during the Paramount War and pre-time skip. And this makes sense right? They only going to be a cannon fodder if they are not getting stronger. And does these Mark III pacifista has control hierarchy like other models? If they have then the situation going to be even worse for Straw Hats and Vegapunk to escape. Because Saturn is coming. The person who deployed the new pacifistas was none other than Sentomaru. But he still look in a bad condition. He is more concerned about the Frontier A dome closed, he's got no way to contact Vegapunk. He is not even sure that the old man is safe. He ordered new pacifistas to assist Dr. Vegapunk to escape from Egghead Island with Straw Hat crew. He is kind loyal to old man Vegapunk. And he is very dedicated to let Vegapunk and Straw Hats escape from Egghead at any cost. He says that the Marines repeatedly contacting him and they must not know that he has switched sides and is rebelling. If I had to take a guess who might be the person trying to contact him it probably could be Kazaru because there is some kind of relation actually they share with each other. And I and you too want to know what kind of relation actually they share. The next panel shows Luffy exhausted from running around looking for Vegapunk and Bonnie. But it could be the side effect of Gear 5 that's why he was tired. While running he broke his Dom shoes. Luffy just only want to know where the hell old guy and Bonnie have gotten to. Vegapunk Shaka said he knows where Bonnie is. He explains to Luffy about the security cameras we can see everything that's inside the Labo phase, through this monitor. So, here Luffy's search was pointless. Luffy said you damn you could have said that sooner. Here we see a dramatic entrance of Zoro, Stussy and Brooke. Wearing a new set of clothes, which somethings make Brooke quite excited. Here Zoro look damn cool in new outfit and Stussy look sexy. Here Zoro notes that they were supposed to set sail. And Stussy wants to see Vegapunk Stella, wondering if something happened to him. Here control center is getting chaotic. We see Straw Hats and Vegapunk satellites are all in one room together. Shaka tells them to calm down and listen what he says. But most of them aren't paying attention to him. All of them are busy in their fun. Here Luffy notices that Atlas face is being repaired. Shaka doesn't acknowledges the chaos just worrying about the issues they have in front of them. Stella being missing, they need to deal with the Frontier Dome being out of their control right now, it being activated they can't leave, if they try to leave it will make them chicken fry. Usopp and Chopper start to get freak out and shout out then how we can leave without Apple Dude. Shaka agrees and says our first priority is to find out our main passenger Stella and Dome is second concern. Here their main concern is to find out where Vegapunk is before leaving no matter what the cost is. And then later they will find a way to repair the Frontier Dome. Frankie bring up the obvious point. If they have security cameras covering the entire lab, then we should have seen him on this monitor. 
As we saw in past chapter, Stella used a teleportation technology back down in the scrapyard, so he may have used that insta transmission and teleported somewhere out of security reach. But we know one thing all these satellites are being connected to each other, so it might be the case when Bonnie attacked Vegapunk at that time, Stella communication system might have broken. Shaka thinks that Stella must be somewhere in Lab of Stratum. He explains he was exaggerating a bit. Everything in the lab should be displayed on his monitors. However, when the Seraphims attacked the Labo phase at that time, the camera might have moved or lost consciousness. Even when the system was fully operational, it was designed to monitor the satellites and workers sequentially. He checked on monitor one by one. Surveillance was never perfect and fainting could cause additional blind spot. When Shaka was thinking about all these, he received a message from Transmission that he has finished checking the third floor of Building C and it seems empty. Shaka acknowledges the Pythagoras information and told him to check the next floor. Nami got ready to for searching him. The sooner they find Stella, sooner they can leave. She was hoping to find some treasure while searching. Brooke and Stussy is quick to offer to join as well, and Sanji to join the search team. But then the guy with best sense of direction, Zoro, offer to join the search party. But immediately Sanji grabs hold him and told him, "You are not going anywhere." Sanji pointing out, "Who gonna find you?" Chopper and Robin agree to the point of Sanji, but Zoro isn't happy about this. But he doesn't argue with them and stayed in the room. Luffy is still out of breath. Zoro makes fun of his captain over how out of breath he still is. Luffy claims he always goes all out. He gave that search everything, and it wasn't that long ago he was fighting Rob Lucci in Gear Five. So he's more than earned this break. The two of them are along with Vegapunk Shaka and two shackled CP0 agent Rob Lucci and Kaku in the same control room. Zoro looks at Kaku and Rob Lucci, and he wasn't expecting that they will run into assassin again. Still, it got nostalgia for Water Seven, and even Luffy wondering if Ice Boss is doing well. Scene shifted to Kuma Memory Chamber, where we saw Bonnie last time. Bonnie was ready to go into the Kuma Memory. So now Bonnie is into the memory of Kuma. She saw a guy sobbing at some distance, and that upset guy is none other than our Kuma. Kid Kuma is crying, and we see bruises over his body. So Vega Punk wasn't lying. This memories are Kuma pain. I don't know how will Bonnie will take all these seeing his father's painful memories. Bonnie recognizes her father and try to run towards him. As all these are Kuma memories, so. Kuma can't hear Bonnie voice. As C was trying to reach Kuma, suddenly two random guys pop up and try to pull Kuma. These guys are not gentle with young Kuma. Kuma is asking for help. He doesn't take it anymore. They just berate him, telling Kuma to return with them. If he doesn't, they'll be killed. Bonnie start running towards them, but she wasn't getting any closer, as all these are just Kuma memories. Kuma insists he doesn't want to go back. The shadows insist that crying won't do anything. The young Kuma screams. He'd die rather than going back. The shadow figure bring out clubs and start viciously beating him. Bonnie cries, running towards them to stop, but she unable to close the distance while yelling at the shadow figure. Young Kuma cries out loud, begging for someone to help him. He's even apologizes to the people beating him. All of sudden, Bonnie falls out of the Kuma's memory. Bonnie literally not doing well. She is shivering after seeing all that out of fear. Back to the Grand Line, where actually Kuma is still trying to climb the Red Line. It's literally seeing both of them make me cry. Bonnie start to pick herself back, wiping her tear, and again try to go into the Kuma's memory. She loves her father, and she is going to have to face all the pain his father went through. Somewhere in the lab, Pythagoras is continuing with his search for Vegapunk. He notes that this area isn't doing too well. This is the birthplace of the Seraphims. If you notices, there is one door has number nine on it. 
so it's interesting nine units of seraphims. When Pythagoras was searching he heard a voice from behind him. Pythagoras turn around. All of a sudden we see a blast. One Vegapunk fixed other Vegapunk is ready to repair. Here something is fishy going on with the Vegapunk satellites. Someone is behind the curtain pulling the string. There might be another Seraphim someone commanded him to take down Vegapunk. Or having imposter among them, like Caribou we haven't seen him for long. Last time we saw him was actually with Zoro and Brook on Thousand Sunny. But it is seriously not going to be easy for Vegapunk and Straw Hats to escape Egghead, whoever imposter might be. Now all of them are on search for Vegapunk are they going to being attacked by imposter one by one? Whoever the traitor is we going to see him soon. Now we off to the skies where headquarters of World Economy News is. Premier newspaper of the One Piece world. Where we see big news, Morgan accompanied by our Miss Wednesday, Vivi and King Wapple. This two character no one could have think will be in same room. Why Vivi is ended up with Wapple after reverie. Does Wapple saved Vivi? If this happened then we might see Wapple being liked by many of One Piece fan. After all he saved our beloved princess Vivi. In the beginning we see Morgan hang up the phone. Whoever he was talking he got the information about the ongoing event going on Egghead. Morgan started thinking a headline after hearing that Luffy is in Egghead Island. Morgan got the title he says Straw Hat Luffy took Vegapunk as hostage, took over Egghead Island and is about to start a war against the world government. He thought world government will be happy seeing this. But after hearing this, Vivi opposes the idea of Mogan by saying Luffy will not do such thing. Wapple tells Vivi to keep her voice down since there may be world government devices hidden somewhere in the ship. We will get to know in upcoming chapter is he going with the same title or going against world government and exposing world government. Guys get ready for upcoming chapter because Oda Sensei is cooking something interesting for his readers. This year One Piece going to break all records. So that all from my side see you all in next video.